Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session, Enhancing Your Workflow, the Lightning Design System. How many people here have already used the design system before? Nice. And how many people have no idea what I'm talking about? <laughs> awesome. Well, by the end of this, we can all say we've at least heard of the design system and seen a really cool demo on how to use it. So. Cool. My name is Ed. I'm a UX engineer on the Lightning Design System team at Salesforce. And I'm Aisha. I'm a senior UX engineer also on the Design Systems team. So uh, before we start, uh, we got to make sure that everyone knows we are a publicly traded company. So we may or may not be making forward-looking statements. So please make your uh, purchasing decisions based on what's publicly available today. All righty. So before we start, just want to make sure we're all on the same page when it comes to terminology. Whenever you talk about design systems work, there's some words that you see over and over, and it can get confusing to figure out what everyone is talking about when they say the same word and mean 10 different things. So let's go over the ultimate question, what are components? This is the word that you will hear us say probably 500 times in the next 40 minutes. So that's why we thought we'd take some time and make sure we all know what we mean when we say components. So how many people have seen this page before? Yeah, pretty familiar. So this is the Opportunity Record homepage, um, something like I can tell we've all seen before, a very classic page for Salesforce. And so looking at this, you know, if you had to answer right now what the components are on this page, it's not super clear. So we're going to break it down, kind of go through an abstract example, and then bring it back to this one. So what is a page? Page is not a component itself. It is a house for all the components. So it's essentially a structured layout of multiple components. It could be just one, or it could be 500. It doesn't matter. It's just kind of the frame that you put all of your components into. So now, if I pull out one of those components, this is you know, kind of one of those record-related list cards that you see on a lot of Salesforce pages on the, you know, the smaller sidebar. This is what we call an experience component. This is an experience component because it's made up of other smaller base components. And so if I go forward one more, you can see that that icon that always signifies the entity, that is a base component. It's like the smallest, tiniest building block that you can use to create a component. And it itself is also a component. So I think I'm at like 20 on the components count. <laughs> but that's kind of how we bring it all back around. So if we look at that page again, these are the components that we have pulled out from that opportunity record home. So we've got the page header up at the top. The sales path is itself a component. We've got tabs which are another component. <laughs> We've got our record detail, which can have stuff like buttons or links, and then that related list card that we saw earlier, which is, again, an experience component. You can also have the activity timeline, which is another experience component because it's made up of icons and links and checkboxes and buttons, and it expands and collapses. It's, again, a very experience component. So now, if we look back at the Opportunity Record home page, you can kind of pull out the components now, right? You get a better sense of what we're talking about when we say the activity timeline component that I just mentioned, which is down at the bottom, or that notes and attachments card is another experience component that I was talking about. It's got the upload files button within it. It's got the drop down button. It's got the icon. So now that we're all familiar with the terminology, we can realize that when we have hundreds and thousands of designers working either internally at Salesforce or all of our external customers, it gets kind of tricky when you're trying to level set that many people, right? I can do it in a couple minutes with a room full of you all, but how do we create a whole system that supports this terminology and lets everyone be on the same page, whether they're designing or developing? Awesome. So let's get a feel for the problem space. Um, Aisha mentioned. Uh, that we have thousands of designers and developers, and that includes people internally as well as externally. In addition to that, uh, we have many, many products across you know, various verticals, 
uh, some uh, develop internally as well as with our external developers as well. Uh, and so these are two great problems to have. It means we're growing, it means we're expanding, there's more participants on the platform. Um, but it becomes difficult to keep the user experience consistent uh, with so many people. So here we have an example of empty states uh, in different applications. And they're all trying to do the same thing. They're trying to convey the empty state message, include some sort of illustration, but they all look completely different. In addition to that, there was no scalable way to really enforce consistent patterns. Uh, we had style guides, but it was kind of hard to follow and enforce and make sure you know, at the end of the uh, development cycle, the uh, product was exactly to spec. Um, and lastly, it was hard to maintain fit and finish, finish details, so things like pixels, padding, border radius, uh, and small details that matter uh, were, were kind of hard to enforce. Um, so the UX engineering team at Salesforce uh, tried to come up with a solution. Um, and we knew we really wanted to do something that encompassed our four core principles of design, uh, which are clarity, efficiency, consistency, and beauty. Uh, and we wanted to do that in a scalable way across the whole platform. Uh, and so what we came up with was the Salesforce Lightning Design System. Uh, and so what is the Salesforce Lightning Design System, or SLDS for short? Uh, first and foremost, it's a single source of truth for designers. So we have awesome guidelines here uh, for designers to kind of see uh, things like colors and icons and really get a feel for the palettes we use, uh, as well as uh, you know, what icon I should use for, let's say, a contact uh, in my application. Uh, and what we found is that a lot of our designers use uh, Sketch as well. Uh, it's a vector-based design uh, application used to make mock-ups and prototypes. Uh, and so we really wanted to embed this system within the workflow. Uh, so something we provide um, for them is a Sketch UI kit, which they're, where they can you know, copy and paste components uh, and put them into their own projects. Uh, of course, it's also a single source of truth for developers. Uh, and so what that means is for components like Aisha was mentioning, uh, we have documentation for them, as well as semantic and accessible markup for each component. Uh, and this is all cross-browser compatible, as well as uh, platform agnostic. And on the right, you see something we call design tokens, which are essentially uh, variables for your style sheets in SAS or Lightning. Uh, and what that allows you to do is affect properties uh, such as background color or border color uh, with these variables. Uh, and overall, it's really just a central repository of components, patterns, and guidelines for both developers and designers. On the right, you see a component uh, we call chat. And here you can see that we provide information on what that component is, where it should be used, what it looks like, uh, some accessibility notes, uh, as well as that markup that I was mentioning earlier. Uh, and of course, we want to make sure that our system is usable uh, by everyone, so including people who might be keyboard users, screen reader users, uh, as well as people who may be colorblind. Uh, and so we provide accessible markup for that, as well as uh, implementation notes uh, in order to make sure that all people can use our product. Last but not least, we wanted to make sure that everything was extensible. We understand that the product lifecycle moves fast, everything's changing, uh, and so we want to make sure that uh, we embed that sort of into our system. So you might have seen something uh, called My Lightning uh, and theming within our last release. And so we were a big player in that, um, in the sense that you know we controlled a lot of the components, and by changing design tokens, we were able to bring in a theme like T-Mobile into the product. Cool. So let me go ahead and demo the documentation site. So this is lightningdesignsystem.com, and I'm going to go through it as if I were visiting for the first time. So let me go ahead and click Get Started right in the middle. Right here, you get a good feel for, again, what the Lightning Design System is and how to really get going if I'm a developer and designer. Uh, on the left, we have our navigation. Under Platforms, we have information on how to get set up on various platforms. Um, and Guidelines is a really good place to start to get a feel for how we approach design uh, here at Salesforce. So there's a lot of information here. Let's go check out something um, like color. So you saw this earlier. Here, I can get a good feel of the color palette that we use. Uh, this is really helpful if I'm a designer. We can see kind of the text, the color for our text within this palette. Some background colors uh, come from this palette. We have our brand colors as well, as well as usage guidelines uh, to tell us kind of how to convey message with color, as well as how to use it within our icons and differentiate uh, different elements of the page. 
So after that, let's move on to uh, the accessibility overview. Here we get a good feel for you know, what exactly accessibility is, um, how we comply with it within the design system. And here, this is a pattern section where we can explore the different components. Uh, so we saw a menu earlier. Uh, we can see kind of semantically what a menu is and what it means uh, to have an accessible menu, uh, the expected behavior, keyboard interactions, um, so what you know, I expect if, uh, what should the user expect if they hit enter space. Uh, we have markup guidelines, so what kind of ARIA attributes you should put into your menu to ensure accessibility, as well as resources at the bottom. So components is sort of the core of uh, the design system. This is where a lot of uh, designers and developers would kind of live in uh, this documentation site. So if we check out a component like cards, which we might have, which we might have seen earlier in the page level experience, uh, we can get a feel for what the component is, what it looks like, where it should be used, as well as, again, uh, the markup that we provide. And if we scroll down below, we can see more information about the component, uh, as well as more info about the uh, CSS classes that we use to style the component. How many times did I say component? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're at 200. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, on the right, we have a few toggles. So we can explore different, what we call like variations of um, the component. So if we click Einstein, we actually have an Einstein variant of the card with Einstein on the right corner, a little blue background, some clouds. Uh, and below that, we have states of this variant. So we have a state where there's an icon next to the header or uh, a state with uh, call to actions on the right of the Einstein character. Uh, and lastly, we have form factor toggles, so you can explore what it might look like in mobile, tablet, and desktop. Uh, moving on to sort of a more complex component that, component that Aisha was uh, talking about earlier, this is the activity timeline. So kind of same look and feel as the last uh, documentation page for cards. We get a feel for what it looks like where it should be used, the markup, which is quite long for this component. And this is why we call it an experience component. It's made up of a lot of smaller ones. Um, and here, uh, this is a good example where we have a lot of a contextual like, accessibility guidelines for this component. So again, ARIA attributes, uh, keyboard interactions, and whatnot. And the same toggles on the right uh, to explore uh, different examples, states, uh, variants. So this is an expanded activity timeline, for example. Cool. So the next section, we want to explore our utilities. These are single purpose CSS classes um, that affect things like padding, margin, text size that you can add straight to the HTML. So if I go ahead and look at padding, I get a feel for what these classes do. I can see that you know, my classes here are prefixed with SLBS, followed by P for padding, top for where the padding is applied, and then the size of the padding. Uh, I want to put on the element. And um, here, again, we have similar toggles for the right, bottom, left, uh, and different size of the element that I want to apply this utility to. Uh, I briefly mentioned design tokens. I, uh, these are, again, variables, essentially, for SAS and uh, your lightning style sheets. Um, and they affect things like background color, font size, opacity uh, in your CSS. Cool, uh, and again, these are icons, so as a designer, a developer, if I'm looking for an icon, again, say context, I can give a quick search here and see all the icons for context um, and apply that to my application. Awesome, so if you like what you see, um, Downloads is a great place to really bring the project or bring the design system into your own project, uh, whether it's do GitHub clone, uh, NPM install, uh, or through a static zip file. Here you can also find our older uh, design system versions, um, as well as a sketch UI kit that I mentioned earlier. So if I click into, if I download the design system uh, sketch UI kit, uh, I actually have it open in Sketch. Um, within here as a designer, I'm first greeted um, with uh, a release notes section, and this kind of shows me um, you know, what's changed, what's new, what's been taken away from the design system. Uh, and the core of the kit is really the desktop components page. So these are split into specific artboards, um, and we're gonna go ahead and start at the leftmost artboard. From here, we can see our simple components. Um, these are things like buttons, checkboxes, 
uh, form elements. And as we move right towards the second artboard, you can see that components get a little bit more complex. And these include checkbox toggles, pick lists, menus. Um, and again, moving right, it becomes more complex. We get our structured components, such as button groups, which are made uh, essentially from the smaller base components, uh, such as the buttons. Um, and again, the last components page is our features components, or again, what we like to call uh, experience components, such as activity timeline, uh, sales path, which you might be familiar with, global header, and global app. And then the last artboard is our uh, kind of fit and finish detail elements. So you have your typography, icons, uh, and color within this artboard. And so a designer can really come here, copy uh, one of these elements, and paste them within their own project. Um, one thing to know is that we do have mobile components within here uh, for our mobile users, as well as wireframes for both platforms to really get the designer going with their mockups. Uh, and of course, we use uh, Sketch. So we use Sketch symbols, uh, which allow people to copy and paste these and use kind of the different features that we know designers love within Sketch. Awesome. All right, so now that we know all the tools and we know what we can use, let's take a look at how we would actually use them. So we're gonna start off with a design persona. So let's say I'm designing an onboarding experience for new people at my company X. So the idea behind the design system is that when I am here as a designer tackling this problem, it should be really easy to do the right thing, but also really hard to do the wrong thing especially when it comes to something like accessibility or color contrast, right? And so as a designer, I wanna be able to use the design system to focus on the experience and not worry on the little pixel perfect details. And so this is what I've created as my first wireframe for onboarding people to my company. On the left, I've got kind of my intro text and cute astro chilling out there. And on the right, I've got my five steps of instructions there's some links in there that are kind of buried, so I don't know if people would see them properly. And then I've got my begin process button at the bottom. I'm kind of worried it's not really clear what would happen to the user if they were to click that button. Like, would they go somewhere? Would something open up? Would they start a process that they couldn't you know, save their work? And so should I not click this right now? It's a little bit stressful. So using the design system, I'm actually going to use a soon to be out new component, you get a cool little sneak peek of the setup assistant. And so the setup assistant is really a pattern that is built as a component that lets people guide a user through a process. Could be anything, right? As it's named setup assistant, you'll start to see it in the setup menus as you're trying to turn on Einstein features or lightning features. But in my case, it actually works perfectly for onboarding someone to my company because I've got five steps that I want to guide them through. I've got actions that I need them to do. I want to tell the user how much progress they've made and how much they have left to do before they're successfully onboarded onto company X. And so here with my setup assistant, I've got all those pieces. And if you just looking at it, it's kind of a friendlier, more inviting, less text heavy experience out of the box. So if I dig into this component a little bit more, if I quizzed you all, would you all say it's an experience component? Because it totally is. It's really just a composition of a bunch of our base components. So at the top, we've got the progress bar. On the left, to indicate your individual step progress, we're using the progress ring component. On the right, you can see we're using our outline button brand component. And then we have a couple of links, and the text is just formatting everything together in a certain layout using our grid system. So this is a prime example of an experience component that's been built out of multiple base components. And so the benefit behind something like this as a designer is that when I'm coming to this problem space of needing to guide a user through certain steps, if I present them with this component out of the box, my user already comes to the table with a sense of familiarity, right? So they've probably seen this component used in other places within Salesforce. And so they'll recognize, oh yeah, I've got these five steps, just click on these actions down on the right. I know my links are gonna take me to the PowerPoint slides. I can fill out this form really quickly, clicking this button, and I have a very clear sense of how much time I have left in this experience. 
So that's kind of the idea behind a design system, is the more consistency and familiarity we can create for our users, the easier it is for everyone, whether I'm designing the actual application or I'm the end user recognizing that this is something I know how to interact with. So how would I have known to use the setup assistant component for this use case? That's where the documentation comes in handy from the design system. So again, it's that single source of truth for both the designers and the developers. And as you can see here, there's different variations of setup assistant. There's detailed documentation about when to use which variant. Why would I use base over the one that has little progress indicators, right? Maybe I need them to do it in consecutive steps. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it's just five things they need to do and it doesn't really matter what order it's in. That's the benefit behind the design system and that's where the documentation will help you as a designer or as a developer if you're trying to figure out when to use a component where. Alrighty, so now let's look at it from a developing point of view. So as a developer, if I'm using the design system, again, should be easy for me to do the right thing, but also hard for me to accidentally do the wrong thing. And so the design, as a developer, that means I can focus on the actual implementation of my application. Again, not having to worry about making everything pixel perfect, worrying about what border radius this sh corner should be, right? So when I'm developing, I've got my three key tools. Got the design system, which should come as no surprise. <laughs> I have the component library open, always, because these Lightning namespace components are actually built off of the design system blueprints, right? And so our design system is purely HTML and CSS. There's no JavaScript so that you can use it in whatever framework you're working in. If you're working off the platform and you're working in React, that's totally fine. There's design system React for you. If you're working on the platform in Lightning, we have the Lightning components. And so the uh, general goal is to have a one-to-one -one mapping between all the components you see on the design system site and the Lightning namespaced versions that come with built-in functionality and keyboard navigation for you. And lastly, I have my developer org, of course, right? So this is where I'm actually prototyping or building out my work using those other two tools to kind of get the right sense of which components to use and how to properly use them. All righty, so with that, let's hop on over. We're at, like I just said, we've got the design system open, got my Lightning Components Developer Guide open, and I've got my developer org open. So I've also got console. I'm just gonna undo some of this so you don't get the full sneak peek. Spoilers. All righty. Or not. It'll update one day. So if I've got my developer console open, you can see I've got, let me try one more time. Nope, okay. I've got my expandable section up at the top with this section title and the content underneath. And so if I go back to the design system, I can see I've got expandable section here. Here is kind of my playground in the design system where I can see the different states, what it looks like when it's closed, open. If I want a non-collapsible version, that's also an option. And then my next step is to look at my Lightning developer guide and see if this component is already available as a Lightning namespace component. And from the looks of it, it isn't. That's just totally fine. That's why we have all of our markup included in the design system. And so what I did is I came back to expandable section copied that markup directly from the site, and in my developer console, pasted it in. So you can see I've got SLDS section up here at the top, I've got my title section, and then I've got the content. So that's all the markup I just copied directly from the site. I made one little switch to switch out the SVG and used lightning button icon instead, so that I get the button icon functionality for free. But now let's say, looking at my page, I wanna make some updates. And I'm actually gonna throw a curveball and not use the form. Let's say we wanna use scope notification instead. So scope notification is a great way to give users a little bit of like inline context on something. Maybe you need to draw their attention to something that's not dismissible so that it's always drawing their attention. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Gonna copy that code. Go back to my developer console, 
And just after all of that text from the section, I'm going to paste in my scope notification component. I'll separate this out so it's a little bit more obvious. So this is all the piece that I just pasted in from the design system. I'm gonna make that same update and use lightning icon instead of the SVG. And so I know this is a utility sprite icon and it's called info. And I know that because of this link over here. It's in the utility sprite section and its name is always at the end, it's info. And so after doing that, got my utility info, I can delete my SVG, save this, come back over here and see if this is going to refresh for me. There it goes. So now I've got my scope notification inside of my expandable section. So I'm kind of in the process of making this custom expandable section lightning component, right? And I'm using things that aren't yet available in the lightning namespace, and so I can just use it directly from the design system. And I've still, I've never, promise you, behind the scenes, did not touch any CSS. Didn't write any styling whatsoever. So all of this came for free. And so if I'm looking at this, I notice, you know, those, that text and that scope notification is really close together. It's kind of butting up against each other. So I'm going to use those utilities that Ed was talking about earlier, and I'm going to use the margin. And so this is kind of the two main pieces of the design system. I'm either working with the components and bringing in whole sections of markup, or I'm using the utilities, which are kind of like all these really useful, helpful helper classes that I can just use in between my components to lay out all of my components if I'm using the grid. And so in my case, I'm going to add some margin top to that scope notification that I just copied, because I don't want them you know, touching, basically. So all I do is add SLDS M for margin, top small, to my scope notification, save that, come back over to my org and refresh this one twice, because why not? There we go. So now you can see I've got that space in between my scope notification and my text. And so let's look at something like you kind of saw earlier. I want to add a form to that expandable section so that my user can fill out an address. But I actually know if I look into Lightning Components that there is indeed a Lightning Input Address component already. So this also exists on the site if I look at form we have something called compound forms, and that's something like an address where you're filling in multiple things that are all related to one main thing, like an address. And so instead of copying this markup and putting it into my component, I'm just going to use the input address because it already exists, has keyboard functionality built into it, has a bunch of attributes that I can benefit from, right, if I'm looking at some of these. And so that's where the two come together. First stop is my Lightning Developer Components Guide. If it's not in there, then I'm copying the markup from the design system. So now I can easily, after my scoped notification, paste this in, say save, refresh my page, again, there it is. So I've got the same issue, right? The address is butting up right against the bottom of my scope notification now. So as you can probably guess, all I would have to do if I wanted to fix that, it's gonna come over here. I'm actually going to, instead of doing top and a bottom, I'm actually going to do vertical, which is a handy trick that does both of them for me, since I already know that's what I want. If I refresh this again, there we go. I've got some spacing now. So this is kind of the iterative process that you can use the design system as a developer, right? So whether you need just the utilities and the helper classes from the SLDS, that's totally fine. That's what most people are using, and then they're using the Lightning namespace components. Or if there's something that's not available yet in Lightning namespace components, or you're going to do crazy customizations to it, you can copy the markup directly from the design system and still not have to worry about the styling, no matter what you're doing. Alrighty, with that, I hope that was helpful for everyone in the room.
That is the extent of our demo time. Um, yeah, so that's all kind of we had for you today. Uh, if you want to learn more, definitely check out our documentation site at lendingdesignsystem.com. Uh, our SLDS booth is in the developer forest just outside. And of course, come chat with one of us in the U on the UX team at Camp Design. Uh, and we definitely have a Lightning Design System module. Uh, so with that, you can kind of go through the development process and see kind of how to utilize SLDS into your own project. Yeah. And with that, thank you. Thank um, you all for coming.